having just worked through a whole bunch of details about why we have this particular truth table up here, let's try and work through an example and see how this works in practice. So let's set up our table the same way we did before. We have P, Q, and R. And as I said, we're going to have four trues followed by four falses. And then a repeating pattern of two trues followed by two falses. And then a final column that is alternating true falses. Some people like to permute this table to make the first column go true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Then the column after that will go two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses, and proceed in that manner. If you like that methodology more, feel free to do that. I just happen to choose this one. So let's do exactly what we said before and start with the innermost parentheses. You might say, well, there's kind of two innermost parentheses. There's this thing on the left and this thing on the right of the implication there. I'm going to start with the one on the left, fully analyze all of these things, and then try to combine it with what's going on over here. So we're going to begin with the innermost thing, which is Q and not R. For my own sanity, that means I'm going to start by writing this little column for not R, which my handwriting doesn't look great. Maybe I'll add a little thing on the R. <laughs> it's not much better. Uh, to signify that it's not a um, backwards negation or something weird. And then all we're doing is we're flipping that R column to be all alternating falses and trues instead. So we're going to have false, 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 and then true, 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 true. And then we want to create another column that is Q or not R. There are two ways you can approach this. Earlier, we tried to look for a particular column where both were false and fill that in first. Another option would be to just look at all the places they're true and start with those. So here we have that in all four of these rows, not R is true. And then let's look for all the places Q is true. It's true in the first row and it's true in the fifth row. And then it, nowhere else is it true that I haven't already filled in the row. So then I have two places where it is false. Hopefully I kept all my columns lined up well enough here. It's sort of easy on not lined paper to mess this up, so be a bit careful. And now I want P implies this thing. And this is the one that most people find confusing. So let's try and make sure we do this correctly. I'm going to scoot my truth table over a bit. We have P implies that column. I'm going to show you a cool little shorthand some people do, which is take this column and just give it a name. I don't want to keep copying down those symbols. Maybe I'll find it tedious in the future. I'm just going to call that whole column Q or not R, so a new variable A. This might get confusing because you've got these weird sort of placeholder variables, but it saves you some pain when looking for the right thing later. So I'm going to write a there in the same color to really drive home where it's coming from. And remember how implication works. We have it right above us if we need to consult it. But the most important thing is that if the start is ever false, it's true. So in these bottom four rows, the start, the antecedent, the premise is false. So in all of those rows, it's automatically true. I don't care what A is. It's totally irrelevant. In these bottom ones, it is always true bottom four. And then in the case where the premise is true, the thing we are trying to keep an eye out for is when we have a true premise and a false conclusion. So the only place where the first column is true and this A column is false is this third row. So in the third row, we're going to have a false and then everywhere else we're going to have a true. Because true implies true, which is what all of those other rows correspond to, is always going to work out. And now, just as we did before, let's save ourselves some pain and give this a letter designation. We'll call that B because I'm endlessly creative with letters. And now we have B implies not Q or R. So B 
implies not Q or R. Thankfully, I didn't comment this earlier. That's the exact same as that letter A I invented. So, so Nick in the uh, video, well. not a I'm smart saying. person, you'll notice, because he thinks that Q now, or not R is the same as not Q or R, apparently. So for the rest of the example, so we're just going to pretend like he was seeing into the future or something, and those letters a actually do match because... Yeah. We have that B is false in this row, so that automatically becomes a true. And now we're looking for places where we have a true hypothesis and a false conclusion, where we have the idea that we're starting with something true and the resulting thing is not true. The order of these columns might be slightly confusing, so let's be careful. We have B implies. So we're looking for where is B true, but A false. So we have one instance of that, and it is down here in the second to last row. So we have a false there, and then it's going to be true everywhere else because that is what our truth table told us when we defined this operation. And there we have our truth table. We've finished with the whole thing. Some people, instead of writing like this B implies A, might even write the word like final here to keep track of where their work is. Just like, hey, this is the final thing. However you want to denote this is totally fine. As long as you can follow your own work. Again, I like to use the shorthand of the letters to help me out a little bit, because otherwise I find it really easy to sort of get cluttered and lost in the sauce a little bit. As you can hopefully tell, implications are slightly more confusing to work with in that you, they're just not as intuitive with English as the other things. There are a couple of ways you can track this. We sort of demonstrated both of them here. One way is that that truth table, if we go look at it again, only has one place that it's false. It's when you have true implies false. You can just quest for that, that row. If you see it, fill in a false, and then just fill in trues everywhere else. That is one way to do it. Or you can do what I did and identify some other properties like P being false, automatically guaranteeing that it's true. Whatever method you prefer, pursue it. There's plenty of correct ways to do this. But the important thing is to make sure you got the truth table correct so that you can always go back and check against everything if you really need to. As you can probably also tell, these things can quickly become a bit unwieldy to write down. So feel free to use whatever shorthands you need to help you with just translating that into work that can be shown in a comprehensible manner. Mine may be not so comprehensible because I decided to write over top of the question prompt. So apologies for that. <laughs>